All right, welcome to the sixth clip yeah, on or part six of chapter 20. Yeah? In the previous clip, we were looking at the expected cash flow here. This is the cash inflow from granting credit to a customer. Yeah? And this is the cash outflow now. This is after one period, one credit period. This is now. Yeah? So we need to identify, we cannot add across yeah, time because this, this is now cash flow this is one credit period after now yeah therefore they are not at the same time value you cannot just add like that yeah directly yeah so you need to take the present value of this so you need to discount this note this yeah this one minus pi multiplied by p is here the same right now you discount this to present value yeah? when you divide this by 1 plus r the discount rate for one credit period yeah? then this becomes the present value yeah? this is the present value of this yeah so it becomes at this point yeah this this whole thing here becomes at time zero yeah becomes value at time zero present value then you can add yeah you can add these two together right so if this is greater than the cash outflow here then this becomes positive yeah but if this is less than the outflow here then this becomes negative right so if it is positive then credit should be granted if it is negative then you should not give credit to the customer yeah but you can sell on cash basis to the customer all right yeah? so that's the idea behind this let's try and apply this yeah the same formula here apply this uh, in an example yeah now your company is considering granting credit to a new customer the variable cost per unit is fifty dollars per unit the current price is hundred and ten dollars per unit the probability of default yeah here is the probability of default for that particular customer this new customer is 15 percent yeah what does that mean it means that 85% uh, of the time or 85% chance that the customer will pay yeah? but there is a 15% chance that the customer will not pay all right and you are told that the monthly required return is 1% yeah the required return the discount rate here is 1% yeah now you just simply apply the formula here right so the net present value is negative 50 this is a variable cost outflow this is cash outflow now present value then this is 1 minus 15 percent this is the probability of default yeah this is the probability of default 1 minus 15 percent is the probability that the customer will pay yeah if they pay it, they will pay 110 ringgit yeah? or 110 dollars yeah so you multiply this this will be the uh, cash flow expected cash flow yeah this is the expected cash flow at the end of one month yeah because uh, the credit period is one month yeah therefore you divide this yeah by the uh, discount factor of one percent yeah over one uh, month therefore this becomes the present value of the expected cash flow yeah so you minus the 50 you get uh, $50 here the cash outflow you get $42.57 yeah? so the net present value is positive this in, uh, shows that the present value of the expected receipt yeah, from the customer is more than the cost of sales now yeah? therefore here you can provide credit yeah? because this is positive yeah? because the present value of the benefit is more than the cost at present value all right the next question is what is the break-even probability yeah here we want to see what is the probability of default break-even probability is the probability of default where the net present value is zero yeah so here we can solve that yeah, using this one minus we use the same formula here one minus pi this is what we want to solve multiplied by 110 dollars this is the price okay divided by 1 plus 1%, 1 the required return is 1%, right? Minus 50, yeah? Because this is the uh, present value of expected, yeah? Receipt from the customer, okay? Minus the present value of the cost. This must be greater than zero, yeah? So then only you can grant credit, okay? 
So you solve for this, yeah? the unknown, yeah? probability of default. So here, the answer, yeah? the, uh, the answer is the pi must be less than or equal to, let me just, uh, okay, yeah? uh, so the probability of default okay, is less than or equal to 1 minus 50 multiplied by 1 plus 1 percent, you bring this over to this side, yeah? it becomes 50 multiplied by 1 plus 1 percent divided by 110. Yeah? This is not sh uh, shown here clearly, yeah? it's at the very bottom. So here, the, the pi or the probability of default is less than or equal to 54 percent. Yeah? So it means that if the probability of default for the customer is less than 54 percent, then you should extend credit. But if the probability of default is more than 54, yeah, let's say 55%, then you should not extend credit. Yeah? So here it uh, agrees with this, yeah? because the probability of default here is 15%, here the net present value is positive, yeah? so you can grant credit. 15% is less than this, right? Therefore, you can grant credit, yeah? you can give credit to the customer. But if the customer's probability of default is 55%, for example, then you should not extend uh, credit to that customer. Yeah, you should sell on cash yeah, basis. Okay. Yeah. So this this probability of default, the break-even probability of default, is useful to determine. Yeah, what is the chance of the customer defaulting? Yeah. For example, if the chance of the customer defaulting roughly you think is about thirty percent, then you should grant credit. Yeah, because it's not more than fifty-four percent. Okay, if the uh, probability of default is, let's say, more than that, let's say 60% of the chance uh, or there's 60% chance that the customer will not pay, then I think you should not provide credit yeah, based on this analysis. Yeah, because if 60%, then the net present value will be negative. Yeah? It will be less than zero. Is that okay? All right. Yeah? So we move on to the next, uh, next slide. Okay, yeah? now we look at okay, yeah, we look at uh, another related problem. Yeah? Now it's also this uh, analysis of granting credit, but this time it's repeat customer. Yeah? Just now it was a one-time sale, this time it is a repeat sale. Yeah? It means you s sell to the same customer again and again, yeah? repeat customer. Yeah? Alright, so how do you do this analysis? Yeah? So again, it's similar. This is now. It's like a timeline here. You can say now, and this is one uh, credit period later. Yeah, from now. Okay. So there are two possibilities: the customer will pay, okay, or the customer will not pay. Okay, there are two possibilities. Yeah. All right. And the probability, of course, if the customer pays, okay, the probability of the customer paying is one minus the pi. Yeah, pi is the probability of default. Okay, so default is this much, therefore the probability of paying will be 1 minus the probability of default. Yeah? So this is clear. Yeah? We have seen that in the previous example as well. Yeah? Even with one time sale, it's the same. Yeah? Now, with the sale receipt, yeah? now you will incur the sale cost, yeah? negative V, yeah? just like in the previous case. But then after one credit period, yeah, if the customer pays, they will pay P, yeah, the price of the product. Okay, yeah, so this is similar to the previous example, yeah, negative V here and P at the end of the credit period. Yeah. But here you have negative V again. Yeah. Why? Because if the customer pays for the purchase of the the purchase made earlier, that means now, yeah, they pay later. This is the purchase made, but this is when they make the payment for the purchase. Yeah? Now, if they make the purchase, then you will sell again to the customer. That is why there is another negative V here. Yeah? All right. But if they don't pay, okay, you, do, you receive nothing. And of course, you don't sell again to the same customer. Yeah? So you lose this, yeah? but you don't lose further yeah? if they don't pay. Yeah? If they don't pay the first payment, then you don't sell again. Yeah? That's what it means. Yeah? Zero and zero here. But here, if they pay, you sell again to the customer. Is that okay? Right, therefore, this is a cash outflow. Yeah? But these two you can add because they are at the same time. Yeah? At every credit period, if they pay, you receive this much, you sell again. Yeah? So it's a repeat yeah? uh, sale. Yeah? Right, now we take the incremental cash flow. Now you have only this negative V. Okay? 
negative V is the incremental cash flow. Here the incremental cash flow is P minus V, but we take the, uh, you multiply with the probability. Yeah? So here you get 1 minus probability multiplied by this. Uh, plus, yeah, of course, when you take the expected cash flow, this plus this, yeah, but this is 0, right? This multiplied by 0 minus 0 is 0, so this is 0. So this will be the expected yeah, cash flow. Yeah? Every credit period, that means if they pay, then this cash flow will occur at every credit period forever. Yeah? So this is a perpetuity. Now this yeah a perpetuity so the present value is this yeah now if you you need to take this to present value this is a perpetuity so present value is this perpetuity divided by r yeah? remember the perpetuity formula is the cash flow divided by the discount rate so when you discount uh, uh, with the discount rate here you divide by the discount rate this becomes the present value of this perpetuity, yeah? this perpetual payment yeah? throughout every credit period forever. When you divide this with the discount rate, this becomes the present value of all those payments. Yeah? So this you uh, add with the cash outflow now yeah? to get the net present value. Is that okay? Okay, that's how you do the analysis. Yeah? That is why you have this formula. Yeah? This formula is important yeah? to understand. All right, let's apply this in an example. Yeah, this is the this is the formula that we we have seen in the previous slide. Okay, so uh, in the previous example, what is the net present value if we are looking at repeat business? Yeah? that means the customer will purchase again and again. Yeah, if we grant credit, they'll purchase. Yeah, if you don't grant credit, they may not buy from you. Yeah, they might not. Uh, uh, buy again yeah? they won't buy now and they won't buy in the future yeah that's the idea behind this yeah so we can apply the formula negative 50 plus 1 minus 15 percent multiplied by 110 minus 50 all this divided by 1 percent yeah so the net present value is positive and it's quite large yeah that means this one okay far outweighs this cost yeah is actually 5100 ringgit yeah or dollars yeah 5100 dollars minus 50 dollars you have 5050 dollars yeah that means the present value of this receipt yeah expected uh, cash flows uh, every credit period forever okay the present value of this is far uh, higher yeah than the initial cost that you incur when you sell to the customer on credit yeah so it means that when there is repeat customer, okay, this is very valuable for the company. Yeah, it may make sense to grant credit to almost everyone once. Yeah, as long as the variable cost is low relative to price. Yeah, so the, here the variable cost is low compared to the price. The greater the difference, then the more likely yeah you are going to uh, extend credit. Yeah, why? Because if they don't pay, you only lose the variable cost yeah, which is very small yeah in relation to what you are likely to gain yeah all right so this is uh, the analysis yeah so the see the difference between the uh, repeat customer formula for net present value and the one-time sale formula the difference is okay only here yeah you divide by one plus r with one time because there is only one cash flow this is uh, perpetuity cash flow here yeah in the previous formula, it was only a single cash flow, yeah. So you discount over one period. So you discount it one plus r, yeah. That is the first difference. The second difference is here, yeah. You don't have minus p here, yeah. In the previous formula, you have one minus uh, pi multiplied by p without minus v, yeah. Here you have minus v because every time you collect, you will sell, yeah, again to the customer, right? So these two occur simul simultaneously, therefore you can add, yeah, or you minus, yeah. This is cash inflow, this is cash outflow. So you, you minus this from this, yeah. So that's the difference between this formula and the previous formula, yeah. So you need, you should not confuse between the two, yeah. So one is for a one-time sale or single sale. This, this formula is for repeat sale, yeah, or uh, continuous, yeah, repeated sales, yeah. Is that okay? All right. I think uh, we move on to the next part. Yeah. Now we come to the 
credit information yeah when we do